Okie doke, folks. Um, I think we're going to get started. So welcome, welcome, welcome um, to the nodes of the realm managing content access. And I hope you all get a kick out of my background picture here <laughs> of my knight, uh, my knight in like kind of armor. Uh, so yeah, and feel free to uh, ask questions along the way. Um, we'll try to answer them either as we go or at the end, kind of depending on how it flows. Um, but yeah, feel free to ask questions anytime. So yeah, let's just hop in. So my name is Jordan Thompson. Uh, I am a technical lead web developer at a company called Digital Kidna, And I guess I should have updated that. We just kind of merged um, companies with a company called Northern. So there should also be like a Northern logo there too. Um, I've been in Drupal for like four, four and a half years now. Um, you can find me on Drupal.org at uh, Nord102. Um, I make a lot of cool stuff. I like I like building custom stuff. I am a co-maintainer on a few projects on Drupal.org. So I've dabbled. I've dabbled with some things. Um, and this node access stuff is a is a pretty interesting complex challenge that i've had to to kind of learn and, and not overcome per se but more kind of like wrangle to figure out what i'm doing um so yeah so what really are no realms and grants and i know realm to most people kind of doesn't really mean too much <laughs> um it you know you think like as my as my title kind of suggests like knights of the realm it's like or like kind of medieval stuff, um, but that's not really the case in, in, in Drupal. So realms, what they are, they're string, it's almost like an arbitrary string that represents grouped access, whether that be so that's like view, update, or delete. But typically I try to recommend that they're fairly descriptive to the to like the purpose of the, the grouped access. So, you know, it could be a, a combination of view, update, delete, so like, you know, you're giving them view access, or you're giving them view update, or view update delete, or any kind of combination like that. Um, and we'll show in some examples as well to make it a little clear. This group access is tracked via a realm and a grant ID on a per node basis. So each node is kind of have has their like that that realm and that grant ID assigned to it. So saying, and you can have multiple realms and multiple grant like that grant realm ID um, kind of combination for the same note, you can have different ones, different kind of levels of access, if you will. Like you could have a view one, you could have a view update, you could have a view update delete, and they're all slightly different, but they're all targeting the same thing. Um, and that's all stored in the database and the node access table. And by default, you'll notice on a site that's not really using any kind of custom node access, you'll see that there's an entry that just has a node ID of zero and a realm of all and even a GID, a grant ID of zero as well. So that's kind of just across the board allowing view access. Um, so it's really not, not really granting anyone anything specific and it's just kind of a blanket across the, the board. But as we dive in to some code example, so to make kind of like to find that realm, to find that record in that node access table, we're actually using a, a hook called hook node access records. And what that does is on a per node basis, as you can kind of see as our uh, parameter there is our node, it's going to be kind of um, entering in those rows if we have any kind of realms that will apply to that node. So in our situation, I've just kind of mocked up a pretend situation where we have, you know, all of our content types say have permissions that only the author can access their own content. So they can only edit and delete, but if you're not the author, you can't do any of that. And what if we wanted to open up that access on a per node basis? So not across the board, it's not saying that like an editor can edit all articles or basic pages. It's an editor can only say, edit certain things that I want them to. So in our, in our kind of pretend example, we have a field called field collaboration and it's a Boolean checkbox. So we're checking if that node has that field and whether or not that that value is true. So whether or not it's checked or not. So if we want to allow collaboration on our, on our node. And you can kind of see here that our, we're defining our grant. So we're defining that realm, which we've just called collaborative. 
Um, so you're trying to make it descriptive enough, but again, the word itself doesn't really matter too much as long as you kind of know what it's doing. We're assigning it a GID of zero, and we're doing we're giving it a grant for view, update, and delete. And this is where you can register kind of any kinds of uh, realms you want. So it's really, and again, when you think realm, it's still realm and that GID are kind of tied together. It's really that combination that you really need to have. Um, when, and we'll see, we'll kind of dive deep that dive into deeper a little later. Um, but that's kind of how you define that. So what that kind of looks like in the database after it's actually shown or actually created is that you'll see, you know, we have our node IDs, got our GIDs, um, our realms, and then it shows our permissions. So I find that looking at this node access table kind of after the fact makes it a little easier to understand. Um, just because you're not explicitly defining that node ID when you're making that grant in that hook. It's applying to the node, but it's not super obvious on, on how it's working. So you can see that node 40 has a node access uh, record of collaborative and node 41, node 42, et cetera, et cetera. And then, you know, you can have different realms in here and different kinds of things like that. It's just a nice way to see it. So yeah, so realm, as I said before, like realm 40 could have multiple if it wanted to. Like if you needed that kind of level of control, it could totally have multiple with different um, permissions and that kind of stuff or different uh, access levels. Uh, but that's kind of how it looks. So when we're getting into grants, so first we made our realm, now we need to talk about grants. So grants, what they are, they inform the node access system of what permissions the user has. So really, if they're trying to do, perform an action like a view or an update or delete, um, there's a hook called the hook node grants that runs and checks to see if that user should be granted access to the realm and that grant ID. Um, and I'll show in a code example after the slide on kind of how we do that. And it's really like if they have access to the realm and the grant, then we're checking if that action that they're trying to do is even included in that realm. So say they're trying to do a delete action um, or like, you know, say they want to have access to a delete action rather, and they're in a realm that only allows them to view an update, then they're not going to have access to that delete unless they're granted access to another realm, which then gives them that delete access. So, it's, but it's on a per, again, it's on a per node basis and it's on a, kind of triggered on a per like kind of attempt to do that action if that makes sense so really it's like the the realms are kind of registering the rules and then the grants are kind of like security checks so i kind of the way i like to analogize it is it is um kind of picture like you know you have a building and you have security cards right so the um you know certain rooms have certain access levels and you have to have a certain like, you know, badge or security card to be able to enter those rooms, right? So um, that level of access is predetermined that certain people with certain types of cards, you know, have um, access to these areas. And then on a per door, you're checking, do I have access to this room? Do I have access to this room? And then, you know, maybe I, I can only look through the window, but I can't go in the door, which is kind of like your view versus like maybe an update delete. So hope that analogy kind of stuck a little bit. <laughs> I thought it was kind of a neat, a neat analogy there. Um, so what the code actually looks like for a grant. So that's a, a hook node grants, as I said before. And that's, as you can kind of see now, it's on a, on a per account level. So it's checking, you know, when I go to do something on that node, check my account, see if I have uh, some condition that, that allows me to get that, that, uh, that grant. So in our example, we have defined our collaborative roles as editor, publisher, and administrator. And then we have a, uh, a condition there that's you know checking if that user, that account uh, on their get roles, if one of those, if they have at least one of those roles, which is that, which is what that array intersect is doing right there. Um, for those who don't know, array intersect will kind of, uh, it'll return array of anything that that uh, matches between those those two arrays there so as long as there's at least something coming over um, from that array intersect then it'll grant true and you can see we're granting them access to the collaborative realm on the zero GID so there because there could be you know a collaborative realm with a different ID a GID and maybe that's a whole different set of permissions or a different realm and 
that different realm has different permissions. So we're specifically giving editors, publishers, and administrators on a per node basis access to, to edit, view, edit, and delete in our case. So we kind of see what that looks like on the database, just to confirm again that, you know, I just kind of added in another set of, of realms there. So they're only having that, that grant view update and delete access from node 40 to 50, but that confidential realm, that kind of secret room, that like super, you know, high security room or in that, in that building, in our analogy, they're not going to have access to, they're only getting access to the realms and the nodes that are part of those realms that we're deciding on. So maybe there's another rule where say maybe only admins have access to access to that confidential area, for example. So you can get, you can get pretty creative and, and kind of very granular on what you're, you're kind of assigning people, if that makes sense. So we've talked about realms, we've talked about grants, um, but how does, how do, how do those, those realms actually get um, added, those rows actually get added to uh, that database table? So something called rebuilding node access permissions. Oh, I had it a little bit. Use that technical, there we go. Um, so when you add or update a realm in your hook node access records, you're gonna have to rebuild the node permissions because that hook doesn't actually run just like casually. It doesn't just run like you know once an hour or, or on a, any kind of set schedule. It does run when a node is created, uh, but any of the, the, the node access rows that are previously existing and then say you update your, your realm permissions, or you add a new one, you'll have to rebuild so that um, it'll pick up any of those new changes. So, and how that process of rebuilding actually works is that it truncates the entire node access table and then reruns that hook node access records for every single node in a batch process. So it's really going through and saying like, you know, is there any access, node access for this node? log those in. So maybe it only applies to one or two or three, et cetera, et cetera. And that um, trigger to rebuild those permissions is actually, it actually exists on the admin report status page. So you'll kind of see a little uh, screenshot here of the node access permissions area. It'll actually tell you how many permissions are in use. So my screenshot is from a site that has quite a bit. That's actually less than a number than we actually have. I think we have close to at least over 300,000, which is pretty crazy. Um, and if you click that rebuild permissions link, it'll run that batch process and go through. Now, just to note, and I'll kind of bring this up a little later in, in the gotcha section, it does take quite a long time to uh, run that batch, depending on how many nodes on your site, because it is still going through each node, regardless if it'll actually get a node access record later. It still needs to check everything, right? Because there could be a chance where you know, it didn't have an access record before, now it does, or maybe you're removing it. Um, so it really needs to know, you know, could kind of hone down that access. So alternative ways of rebuilding, because that may take a really long time, and maybe you have a situation where you're only um, having node access, say, maybe for a specific content type, or maybe a set of content types, and it's not the whole site. Um, in my use case, it was for the majority of the content types. So node rebuilding did take a really long time, um, but there are, these are some other ways that you can kind of do that. So a kind of a good solution, but not, not the best one is saving into individual nodes manually. So when you do that resave, it'll check if there's any new or updated node access and then resave that. Now the better is if you can, you know, save sets of nodes with a content overview page, but the really the best solution so like the best alternative is saving via views bulk operations on the content overview page. Cause then you can do a filter maybe by a specific content type or content types, and you can kind of just save them all real quick. Um, for example, you could save them by, you know, unpromoting them from front, for example, um, assuming that doesn't mess up with your promotion options, you can do stuff like that. And it's just kind of an easy way to trigger that save. Um, so I found that really helpful um, just from a time perspective, depending on,
if you know, say you only changed a realm or a node access uh, record that was only specific to a certain content type, even though you're doing node access for lots of them, maybe you you just need to update one, that one content type, and it'll take you, you know, ten minutes as opposed to like a couple hours to to resave everything. Um, so that's just something to note. And something to note as well is um, because, and I, I will mention this later too, but I want to bring it up just because it's a it's a pretty big thing. If you don't let that node rebuild finish all the way, like some if some reason it stops halfway, then only half of your nodes are going to have that node access. So then you're going to have users that can access things that they really shouldn't be accessing. So that's really, um, if you're ever rebuilding access, especially on a really large site with a lot of nodes, that's definitely a time where you want to kind of put it in maintenance mode, make sure it finishes all the way. And then once you're happy with it, you know, let people back in. Because even people using the site while you're rebuilding permissions, they're going to be able to access things until that node then gets that that access row. So it can be a bit tricky, but um, you know, try not to do it too often. But once it's kind of set, it's set forever. And then um, you know, those are the rules, the access rules, if you will. So now we're getting into alternative access control. So you know, then that node access is good, but what if I want to do other things? Like I want to um, you know, control access to to like custom entities or anything like that. So there are hooks that that do something similar. They're not really quite to the level of a node access uh, grant or realm or record anything like that. But it's it's still still works for for access control. So there's a hook entity access, which is technically also the the hook entity type access. Um, and allows you allows to control um, access to non nodes, and I probably should have put there um, nodes as well because technically you can do it was with nodes because it is an entity type. But you can do custom entities, you can do media, you can do files, and and anything like that. So you have to think too the use case um, and and kind of how this came up is that if you're limiting access or restricting access or granting access, I guess, to a node, you should also be kind of in turn, managing that access with the media that the node is rep or, uh, the referencing and the files that are on the node. Because if someone can't access the node, but they can access the files on that are, are being uploaded to that node, that's not really restricted. They're still kind of getting around and kind of sneaking in and, and kind of maybe those, those files are a little more confidential than the actual node data itself, right? So um, that, that node... Uh, access grant is just on the node level. So anything that it's referencing or anything like that really needs to be kind of locked down. Um, and another use case as well for some alternative control is actually denying access to nodes um, because that grant system only grants. It does not take away access. It's only kind of adding in that access. Um, so we had a use case, for example, where it made sense to, to deny access to nodes where we had content being referenced on a form. So someone was filling out a form and we had to, we were auto filling like a reference field, but we didn't want to give that user the ability to view, edit, update that particular node, but it needed to be referenced for them to save uh, what they were doing. Um, so we actually, it's kind of a weird, like we were granting them access, but then denying other access in a hook. So that they could still reference it when they needed to, uh, but they couldn't actually view or do anything to that node. So it's, I know that's a, it's a pretty specific example, um, but you can you can really do a lot with with these kinds of hooks. And a code example for that is so for custom entities, you can use that hook entity access, and I'll also show an example of the hook entity type access which, again, which is really the same hook. Um, it really depends on how granular you want your your uh, hooks to be. Like you could have a hook per entity type, or you could have just one big hook that does everything. It really depends on your use case. Um, the way I've broken down this, for example, um, is by entity type. So there's a switch for entity type, and then there's a switch uh, switch case for the operation. So as you can see, you have your entity, your operation, and the account. 
um, all for any kind of context you need. So uh, in say a view or a update or delete, you can tweak those to, to really be like an allow or forbidden or based on some kind of condition, which could be coming from the entity, which could be coming from the account. So, you know, maybe this user needs a specific role or specific set of roles or permission to do certain things. Um, or maybe the entity needs to have something uh, checked on it or anything like that for that user to get that, that kind of access. But it's, it's a different type of access, right? This is on entities, not necessarily on nodes. Um, and again, something to note as well is that we have, as you can kind of see at the bottom there, there's an access result neutral. So really what it's doing is if it can't, if it doesn't actually fall into any of these categories, so say we actually have proper conditions in our view, update and delete, and it doesn't actually get to one of those return statements, then it's just really kind of falling back to the default like permissions like in Drupal. So, you know, maybe they, they might actually have access to it, say via for a permission, but we're actually denying them access because of some other condition before we get to that neutral. Um, so that's totally a use case as well. Um, so again, this is pretty bare bones, um, but you can get pretty complicated. It really depends on your content and it really depends on how you're locking that down. Um, so in our case for, uh, you know, locking down media and uh, files say that belong to a node that we're locked or we're granting access to, um, you could say, you know, first we check if they should have access to that node. And if they do have access to the node that the media is being referenced from, then also grant them access to the media. So that's why it's really good that, you know, we can, we have that entity so we can either find what's referencing it or find what maybe it's referencing something and kind of do it like that. So there's definitely some possibilities there on, on figuring out different ways to kind of make your content work. But again, it's really specific to how your content structured and how you're either locking down or granting that kind of access to your users. So again, we have uh, just like a, an ng type example. So in this example, I put in node. So this is where, you know, you could still do some node stuff, but really the granting is all happening through that, that hook grant uh, node access records and the hook node grants. Whereas this might be something different maybe we're denying some of that access here. So there, there's definitely use cases for both. So I hope that makes sense. Um, it's really hard to show a very specific example. Um, just as I said, because like your content might be structured differently. Um, but you really have that granularity to, to pick on a per content type basis, on a per operation basis, um, if they can do certain things. and. Also make a note too, that it's important that you have that account there because you can check the roles someone has, if they're anonymous or not, because maybe, you know, anonymous can, can view certain things, but they can't, uh, or they, they can view all like published content, but you're actually going to take that view access away for specific content types, for example, like they can't even view, um, you know, articles for some reason. Um, and maybe that that's what you want. You can totally do stuff like that. So there's just not endless possibilities, but you definitely have a lot at your disposal. And I think that that kind of makes this why that makes this kind of difficult just because it's, it's kind of hard to really hone down what you're going to be using to kind of lock that down. And uh, yeah, so I hope that makes sense. And just another way to do alternative access control is kind of leveraging entity references for node access. So I kind of mentioned that a little bit with that media reference, but we had an example where um, a, a user was actually referencing a node um, on their, their user record. So what we were doing is we were actually specifying the node ID for the grant ID instead of say a user ID or zero. And then um, we were then granting that user access to that realm with that node ID. So like the realm was kind of like a generic realm of like maybe their role or something. And then granting them using that node ID reference so that because the user has that reference, it's like whatever you have reference to, you can access if that makes sense. So it's just kind of another way to do it. So before we were kind of doing it just based on, in my example, just based on like role, for example, but you can get pretty specific and it's actually kind of funny because this is the main use cases of what we use. We didn't actually go as simple as just by role. Um, it was a little more complex on 
kind of sharing uh, or referencing a node to gain access to that node. Um, so it's quite interesting. Uh, so getting into the gotchas, and I've mentioned a few along the way, um, but there are definitely some, and I probably missed a couple um, when writing these, but I think uh, on like the whole of a concept of node access, it's really hard to wrap your head around. I think um, like the learning curve on figuring out, like even just the words that I'm using, like like grants and realms and and how the hooks work and when to rebuild and when to not rebuild and kind of like linking all those things together really takes some time to kind of figure out. And I think it definitely makes it easier to learn if you start kind of with simple rules, like in my example, where you're starting with just like a role-based kind of uh, realm, like access record, and then you're granting, you know, maybe a specific user uh, based on that. So I think start off small and kind of work your way up to, to get complicated. My use case, we got really complicated um, and it was definitely hard to, to kind of figure out. Um, but once you kind of figure out how all those pieces work, um, then you'll, you'll kind of get there. But I definitely say it's, it is difficult to kind of figure out. And I hope everyone's kind of following along, even though I, as I said, the words are kind of difficult, but I've, hopefully if I've done my job right, then you'll kind of have a better understanding at the end of this. Um, so that's that's the hope. Um, as I've said before, realms and grants do not deny. They're only for granting access. So just kind of remember that because it's a grant doesn't mean you're taking away anything. You're just giving people, you're kind of elevating their access as opposed to bringing it down. Um, so something else that to note is that no grants can conflict with how site permissions are set up. So um, typical configuration, which I, I'd recommend, is that you actually would deny users by default with permissions. So give them as minimal permissions as possible, and then give them these node grants to kind of bump them up, as opposed to granting them full access and trying to take away. I always find that that trying to add things is easier than trying to figure out and make sure that you're taking away all the access that they really shouldn't have. Because um, you might miss something, and now they have access to an area of the site or of uh, a set of nodes that they really shouldn't have access to. So really building those 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 um, that access as opposed to kind of managing it in a weird like take down some but still leave some. It's just kind of a a, a weird system I find. Um, something noted as well is that uh, node access checks will apply um, for all kind of access, sorry, node access will apply for all access checks. So when you're doing, when you're running like a view query or a database query like that, those access checks are gonna be checked. So um, it's whether or not they have view access, right? Um, so those are all gonna happen, but those entity hooks that we were just looking at, they're not gonna be fired um, in, in that kind of view. So uh, you'll have to just make a note that like some of that will have to maybe be controlled elsewhere or um, just kind of looked at uh, I didn't run into too many troubles in my use cases just because we didn't really use uh, a ton of views per se. It was more so either they were as accessing the node and then the content, like say like a media was already just on the node or they're accessing that media from a link directly. Um, so, but again, that's, that's maybe just a, a flag that um, you know, something you might run into. Um, I think I noted that before too that you always have to rebuild node access permissions when adding or updating realms in hook node access records, but you do not have to do it when adding or updating grants in the grant system. And that even that is kind of hard to figure out sometimes um, from at the beginning. Um, and it's because that the node grants is triggered when a user attempts to perform an action and not uh, in general. So it's like when they go to do something, when they go to view something, that's when it's like, do you have access to it? Kind of similar back to my um, analogy, the moment someone takes their key card and puts it on that pad, do they have access? As that's when it's checks. It's not um, kind of any time. So we don't, if we change those grants, say, you know, um, today they don't have access to that door, but we tweak the, the node grants and tomorrow they scan again, they have access to that door. We never had to do a rebuild there because the underlying uh, access records were still the same. We're just changing if they're being granted to them or not, if that makes sense. So um, this really, that, that's I think the hardest thing is like understanding 
like the node access record is really setting that like that underlying uh, permission and that access level. And the grants is just determining who has access to that, who has access to the access, if you will, uh, not to confuse you even more. Um, and another thing is always make sure that that node rebuild finished. I think I mentioned that before, um, but I did run into a situation where I was running it. It was taking a really long time. I left my computer, I came back and it only half finished. And um, it wasn't it wasn't a good situation because then people started getting access to, to pages that they weren't supposed to be, um, and it, it just wasn't a good time. So I definitely recommend like a maintenance window, and making sure that those are all perfectly rebuilt, and then you're good to go. Um, so yeah, and I think this is a good. We have some time to to talk about questions and answers. So this is good for questions and comments. So. I will um, go to the chat and just see what we got for questions or not. Okay, so there is a question on, do you know if there's a way of invoking the needed VBO perms via rebuild via Dresh? Um, so do you mean like, just like resaving everything, but like in a Dresh command instead? And uh, da, 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 da. Um, it's a good question. I think you probably could. I think it would still be pretty timely, though. I, I feel like, um, I don't know, like I feel like uh, views bulk operations pretty performing in that way, I guess, just because it's kind of doing, I don't know, it's pretty quick that I found. Um, but yeah, I know that the batch and like timeout issues is pretty, uh, like not, uh, like not optimal for sure. Um, and that's why like, you know, if you need to do it, if you need to rebuild everything, I would rebuild everything. But if you don't, then try to do like a subset, like, if you're only adding in or updating something very specifically for a specific content type, only update those, only resave those, because the other ones are just going to be cleared out of that database table and then re-added. So you're you're almost like wasting time by doing another re like a full rebuild. Um, I kind of hope that answers your question. I feel like you could probably do something similar with the Dresh command. Um, I specifically haven't. I just kind of leaned on on. Uh, use bulk operations. So uh, another question, can you use grants realms to permit access to a file attached to a node? That is the node itself is public, but the files attached to it are not. Yeah, so um, that's actually one of the use cases we had as well is that, um, you know, I guess in our case, we had restrictions on the nodes and then we had to make the files also a similar restriction, but yeah, you could totally um, you wouldn't actually use grants and realms to permit access to the file because again, files aren't the node, the files are an entity. So um, if I go back in my presentation real quick, um, you'd be using it's like hook entity type, any type access hook and that any type would be a file. And then, you know, based on some kind of permission or role or anything like that, um, you could restrict those kind of files to certain people, um, if that makes sense. So that, that node grant, like the grants and the realms are only for nodes specifically. Anything else you're going into like hook entity type access territory, which has a little bit less control per se, but you're still, it's still the basic idea, right? You have the view, you have the update, you have the delete. So same principle, it's just, I'd say it's maybe a little less robust in a way, just because the node one gets saved, like those get saved in a table, those access, and it definitely applies to more places on the website. As I said, like in view queries and that kind of stuff. So, um, but it definitely could work for files. I definitely had to do that for files, um, for sure. Cause yeah, we had something that had media, but also straight up files. And we had to make sure that they had specific access to that. Um, it's a good question. Uh, another question, wouldn't saving all the nodes reset update time potentially messing up sorting logic? Good question. 
if you do it in such a way, so if you were to manually do it for each one, um, that wouldn't, that would apply it. But I think if you do it via views bulk operations and someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but if you do it via like a views bulk operation, I don't believe the updated time gets switched. There's a way to do it such in such a way that like the, the update date doesn't actually get updated. It's like kind of like a weird workaround where you're resaving it, but it's not actually doing anything. So the update date doesn't actually change, if that makes sense. Um, so you'll have to trust me on that one. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure that that's how it works. But so, someone can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, yeah, it's like a weird hacky way to do it. But I think if you were to go into the node manually and do it, I think that would update the time. Um, I'd have to try it out again <laughs> to specifically answer that question. But um, I would try it on maybe just a subset and just see if that works. Um, but I'm fairly certain, like 85% certain. <laughs> that it won't mess up the dates. Um, question, when would you use this in code and when would you use permissions in admin? So um, really the use case on, on using those node grants versus kind of relying on that permission system is, I guess you could, you could technically like, you know, make specific permissions for accessing like specific content types. But I feel like at that point, it's a lot of work with custom permissions because you're really getting view access to say publish content um, or anything like that. So you're really, it's not as granular as you might want it to be. And it does really allow you a lot of control on who can do those kind of updates, like the view update delete on a, a per content type basis or on a per, well not per content type, I guess per node, but like those very specific things, like you can get really granular, like in my example, like if this box is checked or this field is checked on a node, then it's going to grant like a whole section of users to do it. And that's not something that's necessarily easy to do or kind of easy to kind of customize in like the default permission system. Like it's really not built for that level of granularity. And I know permissions are pretty granular as a whole, but um, I think you can just get a little more custom with this approach um, and just the ways that you're uh, like, limiting that kind of access I, I, or, or granting that kind of access rather. Um, so if that answers your question, like I think the, the use case for this is specific per site. Like if you have a site that's just like all public, everyone can see anything if it's published, then like you never have to worry about node access. But once we're starting to talk like certain logged in users should only have access to certain things when they're logged in and it's too granular for and like, it's like certain nodes that they should have access to that, you know, so like user one should have access to node 40 and 45, but nothing in between. Like that's when you're getting it like really into the weeds for the granularity. And that's when this really plays a good part in it. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Um, qu another question is, have you ever tried using grants realms to make more granular layout builder permissions, like letting user edit the layout of a node, but not the node itself? That's a good question. Um, on my specific uh, project that I implemented this node access on, we actually weren't really leveraging too much of layout builder as, but I have used a lot of layout builder. So I, I don't think that's a good question actually. Hmm. Cause I think edit access, cause there's a, a specific permission for layout builder, but I know that that permission from what I remember is kind of across the board. It's either you have layout builder permissions or you don't, it's not like, on a per content type basis, which I kind of think should be a thing. Like you can only um, do that, but I guess that, I guess that is kind of the split there, right? Cause if you can edit that piece of content, generally you can do the layout, but if you only wanted to do um, the layout, I think what you're saying, yeah, I think that's hard. <laughs> it's a hard question just because it's like half of the editing. I think you'd have to like kind of lock down maybe more of like the route for the edit perhaps. So, so like they couldn't edit, like they couldn't access the edit page, but they could access the layout page. But I don't know if that would necessarily be using the grant system per se. I mean, you could still be doing that, but maybe you're kind of slicing that, that, that update in half in 
like a hook entity type access instead. I'd have to try it out, but I think that would be the case. Like you see, so you could still have those node grants. And then in that, that um, operation update, then maybe you try to figure out whether or not they should be allowed to edit versus layout or both. If that makes sense, I hope that answers your question. I haven't specifically tried it myself, um, but that would definitely be an interesting one because I know that that definitely comes up. Um, another question, are there any contrib modules you find particularly useful in this realm? <laughs> no pun intended. Um, I know there is one, I think there is one called like node grants or something like that. Um, I didn't use it. I think it's, I think it maybe provides, I don't actually know what it provides. Uh, I think it provides maybe like a user interface maybe um, and something like that. But I didn't use any contrib modules specifically for this. Um, I kind of just relied on code examples online and the Drupal docs, which I've linked to all the hook docs, by the way, on all the slides that have hooks in them. Um, so you, I would recommend to check them out. Um, but yeah, it's, it's hard because like, I feel like the majority of websites don't even have to worry about node access. It's like, it's either it's a public website and everyone can view everything or, um, or it's like maybe like an intranet and you have to be logged in anyways to see stuff. You know what I mean? Like this is where it gets into that weird toward territory where like you're splitting that kind of access on a per node for either logged in or maybe logged out users. Like it's, it's kind of like, you know, it's not, it's definitely the unusual case. Um, so yeah, I hope that kind of answers your question. I guess it doesn't really answer your question because there, there's no contrib modules that I used. Um, but I would just recommend like playing around with those hooks and that's really all you need, I think. Um, I have like a specifically, like in my use case, I had a module that just had any kind of user access related thing. So any kind of access hooks or anything like that was all just in one module so that it was like nicely combined. So all these hook any type access, even if it was like a block access or anything like that, it's just kind of locked down in this one specific module. Um, so yeah, hope that answers your question. Uh, another question, did you consider using the content access contrib module rather than you can custom code? So um, it's a good question. I'm gonna just like quickly Google that. Um, Cause that, yeah, I think that's one of the, one of the contrib modules that is out there but um, whether or not I wanted, whether or not we used it. So I will say that it's not currently covered under security, not, not to say that it's not necessarily a good module, but it does look like there's quite a bit of people using it. Um, I think I definitely considered it. Yeah, it looks like it's using like kind of conditions like more rule-based maybe. So I guess it depends. Like, I feel like you could maybe use that, that module, um, if it works for your case. I know that my specific example um, was like very custom. <laughs> so it really required a lot of custom code. So I don't think that content access module would be able to get to like the level that I needed. Um, but I, I definitely wouldn't be opposed to like saying that that's not a good module to use for this. Um, I, again, it really depends on your use case. Like, my 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 examples were or my project had a lot of specific things that people had to meet to then get access. Um, so it wasn't as as simple as like role based or anything like that. It was it got really granular at certain parts. Um, so I think maybe that content access one that module is maybe better suited for a little less complex situations, but still uh, something that it supports. I imagine that there's like a set of rules that you can use. Um, to kind of denote that. Um, but I think at some point you might have to get custom. Again, depends on your use case. Um, but I hope that answers your question as well. Um, and we did hit um, five or 245 or 545, depending on your time zone. Um, so um, feel free to, to reach out if you want to talk to me. Uh, about this presentation or have any questions, I, again, I will relink the slides um, in case you want to check that out. Uh, thanks for coming out. Thanks for talking a, a cool topic.